All right, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about moles and molar mass. So this should be a review from either chemistry or honors chemistry. This is intended for an AP classroom. All right, so let's start with this concept. We can't count particles or measure them directly. Okay, atoms are really small and it would take forever for us to count all of them. Okay, we just, we just can't do it. So we use the concept of a mole to connect the mass of substances reacting and the number of particles undergoing chemical changes. All right, so let's take a look at this table here. So I've got a bunch of elements. I've listed how many atoms are present and the mass. So right away, looking at this, look at that middle column. All of the elements listed have the same number of atoms. They all have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms present. But if you notice, the mass is different. That's because the constituent particles in each sample are different, and therefore it's going to have a different mass. But they have the same number of atoms, just a different mass. Okay, so that's where the concept of a mole comes in. So a mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, and depending on how many protons, electrons, neutrons are in that sample will determine the mass. Okay, so as I mentioned, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is the number of things in a mole. Okay, just like we have 12 things in a dozen, two things in a pair, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is a number that you should associate with the word mole. So the mass of each sample is equal to the formula mass of the substance's particles in units of grams. And the mass of one mole, or the molar mass, is what we're talking about. So let's take a look at an example. It says, what is the molar mass of methane, CH4? So we have carbon in the sample, and we have hydrogen in the sample. There's one carbon, and there's four hydrogens. We know there's four hydrogens because we have a four right here. And because the carbon doesn't have a number uh, next to it, we know that there's just one. On the periodic table, if we go and look these up, carbon has a mass of 12.01 atomic mass units. And hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 .01 atomic mass units. So we just multiply these. 1 times 12.01 is 12.01 .01, and 4 times 1.01 .01 is 4.04. .04. To, uh, to get the total mass, the molar mass, we're just going to add these together. So 12.01 .01 plus 4.04 .04 gives us 16.05 atomic mass units, and that will be our molar mass. All right, this example says, what is the formula mass of sucrose? Um, and I'm looking at this, and I actually have the wrong formula here. We have 22 hydrogens and sucrose, not four. Okay, so we're gonna approach this the same way we did last time. We're going to count how many things we have, and multiply each individual piece by its molar mass on the periodic table. So we have 12 carbons, we have 22 hydrogens, and we have 11 oxygens. Carbon is 12.01 .01, uh, atomic mass units, hydrogen is 1.01 .01 atomic mass units, and then oxygen is 16.00 atomic mass units. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply everything. 12 times 12.01 .01 is 144.12 units. Uh, 22 times 1.01 .01 is 22.22 .22 units. And then oxygen 11 times 16 is 176.00. .00. And when we add all these up, we get 342.3 um, atomic mass units. All right, let's move on and let's take a look at another one. It says, what is the molar mass of calcite? Okay, 
just like the last one. <clears throat> we're going to take the individual pieces, count them up, and multiply by the molar mass. Okay, there's one calcium, there's one carbon, three oxygen. Calcium is 40.08. Carbon is, let's see, six, nope, carbon is 12.01 units. Oxygen is 16. All right, so when we multiply 40.08, One times 12.01 is 12.01. Three times 16 is 48. Add those up and you get 100.09 units. Okay, I just want to point something out. Let's go and let's look back at what it was asking for in the last three questions. So this one was asking for the molar mass. The previous example was asking for the formula mass, and the previous example was asking for the molar mass. So those are all the same thing. Molar mass, formula mass, it's asking for the same thing. So just keep that in mind as you're working through these. All right. <clears throat> so you should be familiar with the concept of a mole. We've talked about molar mass. We figured out how to solve for the molar mass of a compound. Now. We can use that molar mass to convert between mass units, we use grams, and count units such as moles. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. It says, what's the mathematical relationship between moles and mass for hydrogen? Okay, so here, um, one mole of hydrogen is equal to uh, 1.01 grams of hydrogen. For every one mole of hydrogen, we have 1.01 grams of hydrogen. Let's look at another one. How about lithium chloride? One mole of lithium chloride We'd have to find the individual pieces. We'd have to figure out the mass of lithium, the mass of chlorine, and then add those together. And if we do that, we get 42.39 grams of lithium chloride. So that's the mathematical relationship. Okay. Um, in honors and regular, we may have referred to this as our conversion factor. So um, that's all it's asking for here. Oh, look at that. Conversion factor. It's like I can see into the future. A conversion factor is a ratio or fraction, if you think back to stoichiometry, which represents the relationship between the same quantity in two different units. So we go from one unit to another. So it's either going to be grams to moles or moles to grams. We can flip our conversion factor. If we went from particles to moles, the other conversion factor would be moles to particles. We can just flip that fraction depending on which direction we're going. So for this one, it says, what are the conversion factors for this equality? Okay, so I could write this as one mole of hydrogen over 1.01 grams of hydrogen, or I could write this as 1.01 .01 grams of hydrogen over one mole of hydrogen. Okay, again, it just depends what we're going from and converting to. So, when converting a known quantity from one unit to another, multiply by a conversion factor with the starting units in the denominator. Okay, so for example, let's take a look at one of the conversion factors we just used. So if I had moles, so if I had, for example, three moles of hydrogen, I would want to make sure that these moles are in the denominator. These units are in the denominator. So for every one mole of hydrogen, I have 1.01 .01 
grams of hydrogen. If I was starting in grams, it would be flipped. So if it was three grams of hydrogen, my conversion factor would be flipped. Okay, these units here go in the denominator. 1.01 grams of hydrogen and then one point or one mole of hydrogen. Okay, it's flipped depending on what direction we're going. Here's an example. It says a chemical reaction consumes 1.38 moles of sodium. What mass of sodium was consumed in the reaction? All right, so we always start with our given, which is 1.38 moles of sodium. Okay, we want our starting units to go in the denominator of our conversion factor. So for every one mole of sodium, we'd have to go to the periodic table and look up the molar mass. Sodium is 22.99 grams on mine. Okay, these units are going to cancel out. And when I multiply, it's going to be 31.73 grams of sodium. Now I know it's grams of sodium because the units that I haven't crossed off are grams of sodium. All right, last one. So the salt packet contains four grams of sodium chloride, that's NaCl. How many moles of sodium chloride does the packet contain? Okay, so we're going the other way this time. Okay, so this time our given is four grams of sodium chloride. Okay, set up our conversion factor. Our starting units need to go in the denominator. Our molar mass of sodium chloride is 58.44 grams. That's how many grams are in one mole of sodium chloride. Okay, units are going to cancel that are diagonal, and we're going to be just left in moles of sodium chloride. So when we do our math here, you should end up with 0 0.068 moles of sodium chloride. That's it for our first lesson.